They have just told Car 2 to call Brian Barnhart just what I said. They warned him about blocking. Evidently, they're going to warn him again about blocking. Five laps to go. Brian Barnhart, the vice president of operations for the Indy Racing League, who oversees the on-track activity. Oh, look at that! Oh, oh, no! Oh, oh the and lap Brent car! Ray and Eddie Cheever are both involved. And I don't know who the third car was that Greg Ray went to the inside of down the backstretch. Looks like the lap car moved way to the inside to try to get out of the way. Greg Ray was just way too fast and already committed to go to the inside, and they made contact. Robbie McGee. That's Robbie McGee. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, what? Greg Ray is moving around and taking off the steering wheel. So is Eddie Cheever. Well, you got two disappointed race car drivers right there, guys. What an onboard shot we had. Everybody here in the booth ducked. And I'm sure you did at home because we were right with Eddie Cheever when he made hard contact with one of the cars. I don't know which one it was. And you can see the disappointment of Greg Ray. He's just hanging his head down, talking to himself. There's Greg's wife. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, he has certainly gotten by with what I feel like is one of the bravest moves I've seen here at Texas Motor Speedway when he went three abreast. And then he got caught up with the lap car, and it was just a tough break. He was so committed, so much faster than McGee. McGee tried to move down, but he, it was too late, and he was already down there. Down to Vince. With a disappointed John Menard. John, uh, first of all, Chip Ward's car was running so strong, and it went out with a wheel bearing, and now this incident with Greg. Yeah, it's, it's too bad. We had a strong car, and, you know, four laps to go makes you, makes you feel bad, but that's racing. Uh, we'll be back, and uh, we'll get him at Pike's Peak, I guess. So exciting tonight, wheel to wheel. Was Greg gi giving any indication of the uh, thrill out there? Well, I think Greg was pretty busy, just paying attention. He wasn't saying much on the radio, but I don't know if he was half excited as I was here in the pits. I mean, that was quite a race going on there. It's too bad it had to end this way. What a disappointment for Greg Ray. He's out of the car and obviously very disappointed. Here is a replay of what happened. Take a look at Greg Ray. Look at this. He's way down on the inside. He tried to move back up the racetrack. He thought he was around Robbie McGee, but he clipped his left front with his right rear. And, of course, Eddie Cheever was just a victim of circumstances. Here it is once again. There's the contact. And right into the path of Eddie Cheever goes Robbie McGee. And, oh, boy, did Scott Sharp get lucky to get through there unscathed. Yep. Hey, it's better be lucky than good a lot of days. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, I'd rather, I'd rather be lucky than good any day, Larry. <laughs> oh, there's the in-car camera from Greg Ray. Ooh, heavy contact with the wall. And this race could end under caution. There's a lot of debris out there on the backstretch, and there are now less than three laps to go. Well, it's just a terrible, terrible break. Like I said, he had a big run on, on McGee. He committed to the bottom. McGee moved to the bottom, trying to stay out of his way. But as he went around, it just looked like Greg Ray moved up just a split second before he should have, and uh, that's what caused the crash. Jack, what did Scott Sharp, how did he react to all this? Well, he did exactly what Jason Priestley predicted, fellas. He got on the radio and he said, I didn't see it. What happened? They tried to describe what occurred and he said, boy, I dodged a bullet there, didn't I? Cheever runs back to the uh, pit area. And here is the onboard with Cheever. This is what we were on live. Jason knew it was going to happen, and he still ducked that time. <laughs> well, it's a terrible, terrible break oh. for both uh, Eddie Cheever and Greg Ray. Uh, they, that, this was going to be one heck of a shootout down to the end, but uh, not now. That's one of those things that just sort of ingrained in you, Bob. If you, if you ever drive race cars, you, yeah. you, you've seen. You, I, I've seen many things like that. I know Larry has as well on a track where you're you just you're just sort of along for the ride, and, and uh, you know you do duck. I mean, I, I, in GT cars, I used to duck when things used to happen. Wow. <laughs> Here is the onboard from Greg Ray. There's the contact that sent him spinning across the racetrack and then, boom, hard into the outside wall. And on that same angle, you saw Scott Sharp just barely get by without getting tagged. Jack has more on Scott Sharp. Well, just moments ago, the radio got very animated between their crew and Scott Sharp. The crew said, oh, make sure you don't pass the pace car. All radioed back was... I don't think that's funny. <laughs> We've seen uh, Eddie Cheever and Greg Ray out of their cars. Robbie McGee, however, is still in his car, and that's 
down uh, just off of corner number four, so this race is going to end under caution. That's too bad because we had hoped for a battle to the end, but uh, our concern right now is the condition of Robbie McGee as Greg Ray walks back to the pit area. So Scott Sharp is going to win his sixth race and indeed become the all-time winningest driver in the Indy Racing League. Well, I think Scott Sharp will be real happy with this result, obviously winning the race, but uh, I don't think this is quite the way that he wanted to do it. Well, this was a tough, tough night uh, for a lot of these guys, but believe me, this was some of the toughest, tightest racing you're going to see anywhere in the country. Field being led down the back stretch by the Oldsmobile pace car. So Scott Sharp celebrates the anniversary of his victory here last year yep. uh, by another victory. And Bob Jenkins, I want to thank you for spending your anniversary, your 33 <laughs> oh, well, wedding, 33rd you, wedding anniversary with all of us here at ABC. We all wish you. you a very happy anniversary to you and your lovely wife. Thank you very much. Number 33, Scott Sharp will lead Sam Hornish, Felipe Giafoni, Buddy Lazier and Donnie Beachler across the line Donnie, to complete Donnie, the Texas Five. You are the man. Good job, dude. Good job, brother. Well, he certainly did earn his victory. Good point for this, Sharp. I love you guys. Oh, <laughs> great job, Scotty. Yeah. 